How you doing fam bam? This is Chris Mizu here with another video about overclocking your GPU. I want to talk a little bit more in depth about that. And the very first step that you should take before you start overclocking your PC is make sure that you are getting plenty of airflow in it. You want to make sure that everything's ventilated properly. Make sure you wire your PC properly because when, what I mean by wiring your PC properly is having it zip tied and having it nice and neat to where your PC can actually breathe. Also make sure you clean it out really well. If you have it and you need a guide, make sure you check out the card right above me because I just did some spring cleaning to my PC. So the very next step after you clean out your PC and you're very interested in overclocking it, it's the very perfect time because you cannot overclock if you have a bunch of dust on your fans and your PC will end up overheating and then you will have more parts to replace or you might get that wonderful blue screen of death that everyone loves. But before I get right into that, if you find this content very useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy talking about PC and tech stuff, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button to join the big wonderful fan bam. And guys, let's get right into it because I know you want to overclock your PC. I just want to go over a quick brief summary of why you might want to overclock your PC. And maybe you're not getting quite the performance that you want from it. Maybe you have an older GPU model and it's starting to show its age. Whether you're playing on ultra widescreen like mine's. If you're, especially if you're running at 144 hertz on 1440p. Or if you're trying to run at 4K on very high frame rates and you're not getting getting quite the frame rates that you want. Maybe you want to lock at least 60 or maybe you want to lock 120 frames per second. And overclocking your GPU can do that. Of course, you can you could actually see a pretty decent performance if you choose to overclock it. You can even see up to 10 even up to 15% of an improvement. If you're really lucky, you might even see 20%. You'd be surprised how much power your GPU is holding back. But of course, there is some negative effects of that. If you do overclock your GPU, it's a very good possibility that you are shortening the life of your GPU. And the reason being is, of course, what requires more power equals more voltage, which equals more wear and tear on your GPU. So it gets more hot naturally. Of course, if you install more cooling into your GPU, that will also help it. Uh, naturally, GPUs that aren't overclocked straight from the factory are a little bit more quiet. In fact, you can adjust the fan levels to do with temperature and everything with the settings that I will show you. Not only will your GPU perform better if you overclock it, you can see better frame rates. It will, you will see a boost in improvement of speeds on it. And of course, the cons are that you will you can very well shorten the life of your GPU. There are some ste steps that you will also have to partake. And I will show you everything you need to do. You, of course, you will have to bench your PC. And I will recommend you to also bench on the games that you do constantly play instead of just using a synthetic game visualizer in order to bench your PC. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. What I recommend is one of my favorites here. It's called Heaven 2009. It's a very good visual synthetic benchmark that you can get a good idea of exactly how much your GPU can handle. Make sure you go down here, hit free download, and you can just hit Windows 247 megabytes. So you want to download that. And also the very next thing for you to also download, I believe you can use other manufacturers, such as if you're using an Asus GPU, you can also use MSI Afterburner, or you can use EVGA Precision, download something like MSI Afterburner, which looks something like this. Just to let you guys know, I'll make sure to have the link right down below for you. And all this software is completely free which is the best part. So MSI at the burner is ready to go. You click here, you're gonna double click it. You're gonna run it as an administrator, click English or the language of your choice, click next, I accept. And then it will automatically install MSI Afterburner into your PC. Click next, 
I accept this is all for statistics. You don't have to install this statistics server if you don't want to, but I will just install it anyway. So let's run MSI Afterburner and you can see how it looks. It should look something like this. But the good thing about heaven is you could actually run it on loops compared to a superposition. Superposition, you cannot run it on loops and you can't really stress out the GPU as much as you would like. So just click agree and then you can change the quality over to ultra. You could change your tessellation, your stereo 3D, your if you're running multi -mo monitors, you could also run it on that. You could also turn on anti-aliasing. Um, you, also, you can run it as a window, which will make it a little bit more simpler for you if you're running MSI Afterburner. So we'll open that up as well. Now we have MSI Afterburner open ready to overclock and we also have heaven ready to go now the next step you also have to do is make sure you turn up your power limit you could turn this all the way up if you so choose to but i typically like to keep my uh, gpu under 85 at least so that brings power limit percentage to 102 you can also go here to your settings and you could actually go under fan and then you could define the temperatures of how strong you want your fans to run so if it hits 50 degrees Celsius, it will run at 50%. If it runs at, once it starts to hit the higher temperatures, once it hits 70, especially you'll notice it run about uh, 60, 65, and then it, so on. So as it constantly builds up heat, you will see the fan curve uh, actually go up to all the way to 100%. And you could define it yourself and you could uh, set it yourself to each particular moment if you so choose to if personally if it goes over around say 70 i will start to raise up the temp uh, raise up the fans and that should do it so i just click apply and all you have to do is make sure that this is on before we start overclocking we're going to just run a standard test with these stock settings so all you have to do is click run and you'll see how it looks like you'll notice up here on the top where it has frames per second you also have the type of gpu that you have the kind of memory that it's currently on and the graphics you can see the core clock of your graphics card as well. And when you're running these tests, you want to look for any kind of artifacts or any type of screen tearing or anything like that, any weird flares, any shadowings. So we got about 140.8 frames per second and the score is 35.48. So we're going to move on to boosting it up a little bit and we're going to see how much better benchmarks we can get after overclocking. The very next thing we're going to do, the very first step in order to overclock your GPU is we're going to increase your memory clock. Of course, after, make sure you checked out how to increase your fan speeds because you will definitely need it. Um, so another thing is for the memory clock, it will also increase better usage for when you use applications such as Photoshop or Premiere or any type of games that require very heavy memory and usually when you overclock this it won't you don't ever have to worry about your card crashing or a blue screen of death instead if you go up incrementally which is about 50 to 100 each time which i usually generally recommend a lower number which is 50 type that first and make sure you apply it if you do not hit this check mark button it will not go through so let's see if it worked so we're gonna just run a quick test to make sure that it did process through and it did as you can see now the memory reads 7050 which it did go up about 50 megahertz so you just continue on doing tests and you want to look for anything weird such as artifacts which are pink or green little pixels or black pixels to where you notice uh, that is missing from the screen or you notice any weird glaring or anything that does not look right then that means that you have went too far in your overclock 
so but of course it is in the early stages and it looks like we're good to go for now as you notice that the memory clock megahertz has increased exponentially to 550 megahertz and I haven't really found any issues with it just quite yet but now I believe I'm starting to get to that zone to where I feel pretty confident about this number also if you boost up your memory clock a little too much it can also affect your performance to where then it, you will actually see a decrease in performance so i am pretty comfortable with this number where i am now with 550 megahertz boosted on my gpu which is a pretty comfortable number and the temperature seems like it has been holding pretty steady at around 75 degrees celsius so this is a pretty good number to stay at for me but of course if you notice anything weird with your gpu if you notice any different visualizations then i would suggest to back up at least 50 or 100 megahertz we're going to mess with the core clock now so with the core clock you just want to bring it up 25 each time because that will be a lot more unstable compared to trying to boost your memory clock. So let's give this a shot and see how it performs. So when you update your core clock, you wanna make sure you update it by 25 megahertz only because this will give you hard freezing and blue screens of death. And also you'll notice an increase in FPS, which is the main reason why you're probably overclocking is so that way you can increase your frame rates in your gaming. And this is exactly what this can do. Of course, this is more critical to your GPU and also be careful. If you do notice any hard freezing, stuttering, or anything weird while you are testing, make sure you just take a step back a notch. So if you had it boosted up, say to 200 megahertz, and you started noticing a little bit of stuttering, just step it back 25 megahertz and just have it set to 175 or you could do 150 megahertz if you want to play it safe but it's not really all too complicated and it's really not too hard to do it's nothing to be scared of and you don't have to worry about any critical damage to your gp so after overclocking for a hour or so i think i found my sweet spot for my gpu Luckily, it hasn't really shown any weaknesses as artifacts or any shadowings, but of course, I don't want to push it too far over the limit. So right now, I'm currently 200 megahertz over on core clocking and about 550 megahertz on memory clocking. So it's looking like it's holding steady, and we will see the results right after this bench. As you can see, we got our benchmark results back. It looks like the FPS is at 149.6. Now the score is 3767 compared to its score before. So you can see how much better performance you can get from overclocking your GPU. And it's definitely worth it if you're looking to get a little bit more boost and power out of your GPU. So hey fam bam, guys, if you found this content very useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy content just like this and you love talking about PC and tech stuff, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And don't forget to follow my Twitter handle right here as it is the same across the board with IG and TikTok as well. Fam bam, guys, how do you feel about overclocking your GPU? Is it something that you wanna do? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching.